Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman with LonReviewsTech.com. I'm going to do something I haven't done before, which is a live unboxing video of my new Nikon D600. And I recently picked this up uh, from Amazon during one of their holiday specials, and I actually got the, uh, the deluxe edition kit here. This I don't usually like getting kit lenses, but sometimes they're pretty a pretty good deal. And Nikon, uh, Amazon was actually selling this kit with the lens for the same price as the body. So um, I went ahead and just got that. It comes with a uh, 24 to 85 uh, VR lens, and we're gonna open all that up. I already opened up that box just because it's really kind of boring. There's other boxes in it, uh, but this is the lens that came out of it. So what we're gonna do next is switch over to our Nikon D600 box here and uh, crack it open for the first time. And we're gonna do all this in real time, so hopefully this won't get too boring, but as always, you get your warranty card there, um, your oh, manuals, kind of heavy. We'll put those aside for a minute there. And then we get into the meat and potatoes here. So we've got uh, a white box here containing all sorts of stuff. And one of the things that I love about Nikon is that when you've got one of the pro level cameras, uh, they give you a strap to show off how cool you are if you're a camera geek. So when you walk around uh, at news events or something like that, you, know, you proudly display your D600 to let people know what you got. Now, granted, wherever you go, there's always somebody with a better camera. Um, so just be, be ready for that uh, as it happens. Uh, we have what looks like a USB cable here. That's rather standard. Power cable for the United States of America here. So that is in there. Um, this is a 110 little power adapter, which I assume go is going to snap onto uh, this other device that we'll probably pull out of here. The battery, this is important, so we will get that put together. The battery charger, this actually looks a lot like the D7000 charger, so looks like they're keeping things consistent there. I'm just going to open, oops, open the battery real quick just so... We are ready to go. I don't know if it's charged, so if it's not charged, we're going to have to uh, take a intermission while I charge this and eat some dinner. Uh, the battery looks about the same as the D7000 too, but I'm not uh, totally sure about that. And I think that's all that's in there, um, and a little plastic cover for the charger. With the charger, you can uh, mount it on the wall, or you can just um, run the cord from it. I like to run the cord from it just so it gives me uh, some space. Now I'm going to unpack the camera now and as I do that move the box aside here I want to talk about why I went with the 600 versus the 800 because uh, we have a lot of choices in cameras these days um, the 800 was about almost seven or eight hundred dollars more than the 600 so that was certainly a, a prime consideration uh, the other is is that you know I don't think I really needed all the power that the 800 can provide the D800 uh, is a 36 megapixel camera compared to 25 on this one uh, the D7000, which is the camera I use mostly now, is, uh, I think, um, 16. So, you know, all across the board, these cameras are really high resolution. Uh, 25 to 36 is a big jump, and certainly a lot of uh, uh, good image quality comes with that jump. But the cost in dollars is there. The cost in memory cards, because you need to buy a lot more storage to uh, store all this stuff. And I heard that the file sizes on the D800 are in the 75 megabyte range, which takes a toll on computer disk space when you're out in the field, and also takes a toll on battery too, because you're processing a lot more data. But the biggest factor for me was the ability to take a lot of rapid fire shots. I do, a lot of the photography I do is action out in the field and covering the space program and some other stuff. And I really need to take a lot of rapid fire shots. And the frame rate on the 600 is actually faster than the 800 because it is writing uh, smaller files back to disk. And we're still looking at a considerably uh, improved image quality over uh, the D7000 and uh, earlier models as well. So, uh, so it's wrapped in bubble wrap and then another layer of plastic. And one of the things that uh, this camera has had some issues with from what I read online is that it has uh, some problems dealing with, um, oops, pull that off, it's very nice. Uh, it has some problems with uh, some, some, apparently some oil coming on to the sensor. So we're gonna take a look at that closely in the next week or two as I use it a little bit more. So uh, here's the camera, it feels very sturdy. It actually feels very similar to the D7000. So if you have a D7000, uh, it doesn't feel much bigger. And I'll, maybe I'll grab the D7000 from upstairs 
uh, and uh, compare the two. But it really does not feel as bulky as the D300, which a lot of you have probably used. Um, so it's a pretty nice, uh, nice feel camera. So it's going to put the battery in real quick, and hopefully uh, the camera will power up. And look at that, it does. So we're going to select English for our language. Uh, we'll pick our location on the planet Earth, and we'll say New York is our time zone. And boy, this is going to be boring for, for all of you. Um, turn that off for a minute. Uh, so what is today? 1224. It's Christmas Eve. And we're looking at about 6 p.m. Uh, so we'll say 1800 and 15. Get that programmed in here. And I apologize for going through this boring process here. And we're done. So now what I'm going to do is I have a memory card here that I got uh, earlier. This is a, he has a standard memory card, PNY. It's, it writes pretty fast, so I've had some good luck with these cards. And what I'm going to do first is format the card because, and I'm going to have to learn my way around these menus here, because this card was used on another camera and I want to make sure it's ready to go. So I need to go and just scroll through here. Here we go, format memory card. So we're going to do that real quick. And we're going to format it to slot one and all images will be erased. And we're done. Okay, so uh, let's see. Now I've got it right now. It must be in, um, let me see if I can turn the light on this thing here. Uh, it must be in the uh, JPEG mode because it says I have 2,000 images that I can store on here. And I only shoot in RAW, and you should too, because RAW is really what comes out of the camera. So we're going to go over here to image quality. And it drives me crazy that they actually default to, on, a, on a pro level camera to probably a, a pretty mediocre uh, image quality. So you want to immediately go over to Nef RAW. So we'll do that. And now our image count is down to 296 on a 16 gigabyte card, which isn't bad because you know that's a lot of images, but still um, they're going to be taking up a lot of space. So we're going to now, let's pull off the lens protector and we're going to put on the lens here. Fasten it in. All right, so now we are up and running and I like to shoot in aperture priority mode because oh, it's got a little bit of a lock on here. Uh, that's a nice feature. So this is a little different from prior cameras. It has a lock on there. So I'm going to flip it into that. Got my lens cover off and I'm going to run it down to 3.5. And uh, one other thing to check out, and I've got to find the button now because this is all different from my other camera, uh, is the ISO because we are, although I'm, I am lit, um, the camera might need a little more light than it has right now. So it looks like ISO is down in the corner here. So if I hold that down, I'm going to crank the ISO. Let me do, let me start at uh, 1600 real quick. And I am going to also on here change this to the rapid fire mode, the CH. And let's take a few pictures. Maybe I'll take a picture of my studio here. And it's pretty quick. It doesn't feel as rapid fire as my D300 um, was, but it certainly um, does feel pretty nice and can take a lot of quick shots. Looks like it was readjusting itself each time I was taking a picture here. So um, pretty slick. So let me uh, back out of that, take another quick shot here, and there it goes. So that's, that's not a bad frame rate. So, uh, so that's it. We're going to uh, take a break now, and I am going to uh, take this memory card out of the camera and pop it in my Mac, and let's see uh, how big these file sizes are. So it looks like the images are about 30 megabytes a piece in RAW format, which is uh, certainly not small. Um, and it's also about 10 megabytes bigger than the D7000. So uh, you definitely want to make sure you've got some big memory cards here. This camera uses SD cards. Uh, it's got two slots for that. And also make sure that your Mac or PC that you're using to download these images has enough storage to look at all these photos. So I took a few minutes and shot a few pictures of my dog upstairs, and I have to say that the image quality, especially in low light, is pretty incredible. You know, one of the things that these cameras have done is really raised the bar on low light sensitivity. And here, check out a few shots that I just took here. Um, here's my dog, and she's upstairs. And this was at about 3,000 ISO. It's hard to kind of see on the screen, obviously, uh, the photo quality here, but this one is uh, 6,400 ISO very low light, no flash, and certainly you have some grain around here and whatnot, but um, it's really uh, pretty impressive um, for the, the quality of picture you get out of it. Again, no flash, 6400 ISO. This is um, the top setting. It, it can actually go higher, but it gives it some designation called high or something like that, but um, very impressive uh, photo, photo quality out of this thing. If I pull up uh, preview here, I'll zoom in a little bit so you can get a uh, feel for the graininess that that gets introduced, but you can see it's still pretty pretty sharp here. And 
you'll see some grain around there, but I think if you were to compare this to a D7000 or even a D300S, uh, or certainly a D300S, you won't see the same uh, quality of image. The nice thing too with these huge files is that you can crop and zoom better so that even if you're not completely close to something, you can uh, kind of get in that close with, um, uh, you know, with a crop and zoom. And you can see here, you know, the part where she's lit obviously is better and it's a little, little noisy in the back there, but still incredibly impressive for uh, a low light situation. There was really just one little um, energy efficient bulb uh, running there, but pretty incredible image quality just on the first run with it. So we'll see how it, uh, how we can get it better as time goes on. I also have some faster lenses too that I'm going to play with it uh, to see if we can squeeze any more of that low light sensitivity out of the camera, but it's already looking pretty good. All right, well, I just went upstairs and grabbed my D7000 and you can see the size of the two is pretty close. The uh, 600 is a little bit taller, um, but really around the grip, it feels uh, pretty much like the same camera almost. So it doesn't, uh, if you go from the 7000 uh, to the 600, it's not going to feel that much different. If you go from something like the D300 or the D300S, uh, it might feel a little bit different uh, just because the 600 is a slimmer body and uh, it feels about the same weight also. Um, these are not light cameras. These are, these are hefty, uh, almost pro level cameras. So they do have a little bit of heft to them, but they, they feel great. Um, they really do. So let's take a look at a few other things on the camera uh, and then we'll call it a day. But um, on the back here, we have the HDMI in and we're going to actually plug in this uh, camera into my Blackmagic switcher. And I think I should be able to pull it up here. And if I go to playback, we can see some of the, the pictures that we had taken before. Um, so it'll, it'll stream that and then it'll also, um, you can also fire it off into live view and that will give us a live image of what we're seeing um, on the display screen. And I believe there's a way to disable um, that live view, uh, you know, all the data stuff going on there and get uh, a pretty good image out of it. The so when you're in live view, you first get this view that we talked about before, which is uh, this display happening here. But if you hit on the camera, the info button, uh, that will get rid of that. And this is where that shortfall that I was talking about comes into play. So first of all, it is cool to have an SLR that I can use just like my video camera over here to uh, get in close and uh, do all these things live uncompressed. This is actually, this is uncompressed video coming out of the camera directly. Uh, the problem though, is that as you can see around the border, um, only 95% of the screen is visible. And that's a bit of a problem, uh, especially for professionals who need to use the full frame. Uh, and I'm not sure if it's something Nikon's going to fix in firmware or not, but this is, uh, this is one area where the D600 doesn't do something the D800 does. And the D800 gives you that full frame uh, when you're out there. But uh, this one, as you can see, just gives you um, the 95%. It might be something they could fix in, in firmware. So hopefully that will be uh, something we'll see happen in the near future. So um, nevertheless, it... Uh, is a bit of a bummer, but I don't, I'm not going to use this direct recording capability all that often. So this, this I knew about and it wasn't that big of a deal, but it certainly uh, might dissuade others from getting the camera. I should add though, that when you record onto the camera itself, you do get the full frame of video. You don't lose anything. So as you can see here, uh, we have the full frame of video, but when you use the HDMI port to output video, you only get 95% of the picture. Hopefully they can fix this. One other issue that I've run across with Nikon cameras is something called rolling shutter when you're taking video. And these cameras initially, and now it's, it's changed a lot over the last couple of years, but these cameras initially were not designed for taking video. They were designed to take still photos, but they kind of grafted on the video feature, uh, mostly when Canon really got into the game uh, with their SLRs, putting some video functionality into them. But now they're all uh, doing a really good job with video. And when that initial grafting happened, the, the sensors really weren't tuned for taking video. The images look great. But if you knocked the camera or moved it quickly, you would get this jelly vision where things would kind of get all distorted. And uh, Nikon has really improved this over the last couple of cameras. The D300S, which I um, got a couple of years ago, was terrible. And it was fine if it was locked down, but any kind of movement was horrible. Uh, the 7000 was a major improvement. And let's take a look and see how this is doing here. And you can see it's still a little bit um, uh, jellied if you look at the bottom of the monitor and just kind of see how it almost uh, moves at a different rate of speed than the top, uh, but it's considerably better than uh, what I've seen with uh, other Nikon cameras uh, in the past. This is a definite improvement here. So thanks for watching my unboxing of the D600. I have a lot to learn as to how to use it. 
I've got a big uh, manual here to do some homework with tonight, so I'm looking forward to getting to know this camera a little bit better and uh, taking some holiday photos. But uh, Nikon makes a really, some really great products. Uh, the D600 is, is going to be, I'm certain of it, <laughs> no, no less of a camera than the prior models. But uh, nevertheless, there, you know, there's a couple of little limitations over the more expensive D800. But uh, for me, I was looking for, again, the smaller file size, uh, decent resolution, improved video quality, and that 95% uh, screen uh, real estate for the video is a bit of a bummer, but uh, we'll see if maybe there's some firmware that happens in the future that might fix that. So I'm going to play with this some more. I'll probably do another review coming up, but I really want to hear from you. So if you have comments, questions about the camera that you'd like answered, uh, leave them in the comment stream here on YouTube or on my site and I will get those answers to you as soon as I can and make this more of an interactive product review process. This is Lon Seiden with LonReviewsTech.com. Thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe.